projecting yourself into the future Do you see what you saw? Now you know what to do Do you get it? Do you see it? Using your feelings to reach out in time and space Find what you need and then you bring it to you and you rest Has happened Find out the seeds of it what you will want and you know Welcome to Synchronicity. We have a fun, super fun. Can I say super fun? I'm going to turn my headphones up. I like to hear my voice. Oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, yeah. It sounds the same to you, but to me, it sounds louder. <sighs> How you doing? This has been uh, quite the wind up to uh, wind down, wind up. Feels like a wind up uh, of 2019. Holy shit. What world are we in, guys? Right? You get it. If you're listening to this podcast at this point, you get it. Shit's fucking nuts. Holy crap. It's great. It's amazing if you can just go with the flow, but I get uh, oh, not the easiest thing. So we have a whole big, what did I call this episode? The Wish Fulfilling Jewel. Let's just tackle that. I don't know. I don't even know why. I, oh, I do know why I named it that, but I don't think this episode is explicit, exclusively going to be about that. So I am is the Wish Fulfilling Jewel. I am equals the Wish Fulfilling Jewel. Our sense of I am is all that there is. I know I've covered this many times, but I find myself getting in conversations with people and reiterating this point and having a, a, a positive impact on people's conception, especially as we're moving into, um, you know, this Jesus Christ period of time where people are focusing on the man, Jesus Christ, which is not really the point, but it's okay if you want to look at that person as a prophet. Totally cool. But you're Jesus Christ. I'm Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is just waking up to who you are, remembering it. There's so many allegories that we can use to prove this, but we're, we're I'm getting ahead of myself. Totally getting ahead of myself. First, what we're going to do is talk about the stuff I wrote down here. We're going to talk about the intro stuff. Then we're going to answer some questions. Then we're going to get into the meat of it. And then we're going to do some tweet stuff. And yeah. And this week, just as a reminder, just so we'll go right into the intro right now, um, I am booked the fuck up. I opened up a few more slots because why not um, for this coming week, which is the Christmas week, the 23rd through the, through the 27th. Um, it filled up about as fast as I've ever seen anything fill, fill up. That shit was crazy. Thank you, guys. And I, we're going to have a magical week here. So I'm pretty tied up for this week. So um, well, we will have two episodes. There will come out. One will come out um, around Christmas with a guest because I had those, had the foresight to record those. So those are coming out. It's going to be normal. But other than that, it's just going to be a lot lower output because it's basically a total work week for me, which is great. And I love it. There are a few more slots, so if you want to sign up, do that now. Also, just a reminder, my 2020 bookings are open. Um, I only am doing six days a month, and they are spread out for the new moon, the full moon. Um, there's going to be some live events based around those two in Los Angeles, uh, but my prices are going to go up in 2020. So if you want the 2019 prices, this is the time to do it. Otherwise, when you come back in 2020, you're like, okay, now I want that reading. You'll be like, what the fuck, Noah? Why do you keep rising your prices? <laughs> and you'll, you'll know why after you do a reading, as everyone does. Um, so just this is a little tip to early adopters, to listeners, that those are available. So if you want to go ahead all the way up through, I think, the second quarter, th so through June, um, you can find those dates, all astrologically significant. Okay, uh, Los Angeles, um, there's going to be live events, like I mentioned, coming up um, January, February. I don't know if we'll have one in January. We could probably do it. If I get my shit together, I don't see why not, um, where there'll be some tarot, Q&As, things like that, um, looking to spon uh, get sponsored or partner rather with some cool brands who are interested in that. So if you're one of those brands, I'm not looking for a handout. I really want to help people build shit. So if you're someone in LA, you have a space or you, I mean, I have some spaces, but if you have like 
something and you think we could partner, shoot an email to noah at syncpodcast.com. Soon I'm going to be shuffling these to different emails and I'm going to be not part of this process. But in the early stages, I like to know the people right off the bat. So that's going on. Uh, also in Brooklyn, we'll be doing some events uh, in 2020. So stay tuned for those. They're fun. They're coming up. And if you're not in Los Angeles or Brooklyn or New York City and you want an event to come to you, go fill out the form. Join the email list. I'll put a link to the form this week on the show notes. Uh, there's a form. It's a quick little survey. It takes like 30 seconds. You tell me where you live. You tell me venues that are near you. You tell me how many people can hold estimated. You tell me if you have a contact. Then I have a list, a rolling list of people in certain locations. And if a oh, shitload of people hit me up from Chicago, then I go to Chicago. If a shit a load of people hit me up in Tuscaloosa. I don't think Tuscaloosa I'm a van. Is Tuscaloosa? Why? It's from a sublime song that's in my head, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Anyway, uh, I'm going there is my point. So that's how that works. Or come to Los Angeles or Brooklyn. And I'll see you there. Okay, last thing. Remember Stephen Campman? Uh, he's been on three episodes. I think that's the record for return guests. He's the dreams guy. He has this dream mentorship and dreams course program. Um, there will be a link to his email in the show notes as well. He is looking for a few people to mentor um, coming up and there's limited availability. He does not charge for this. He does ask a donation to uh, uh, Michael J. Bach, Fox Foundation for Parkinson's. So it's pretty simple. He's about as good of a dude as I've ever met. So this is really about, a, it's an incredible opportunity. And he's been asking me for a while. I was like, hey, can you put this out? And I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And now is the time to do it. So check him out. Go listen to the episodes with him. Um, you know, he's, he's a pretty special guy. So I think that's the intro stuff. Um, anything else? No. How you doing? You doing good? Everything should be good. I mean, I know it's fucking crazy. Still oscillating between fear and bliss. Oh, I get it. I get it. Bliss is pretty good though. I highly recommend it. This 5D shit is fucking great. Okay. Let's get into some questions. First question. Number one. Do you know if it's possible to communicate with other people's subconscious through a dream? Uh, here's her example. I had a dream last week where I was talking to a good friend of mine and giving her encouragement and permission to feel happy about her dad getting out of jail. In physical reality, I didn't know when her dad would be getting out of jail and hadn't consciously thought about it in at least a few months. Two days after I dreamt this, I got a text from my friend saying that she just visited her dad in jail for the last time because he's getting out of jail in just a couple months. She sounded very excited about it. I also didn't know that my friend was going to visit her dad again. I feel like I effectively communicated subconsciously with her, with her to let her know that it was okay to express her happiness to me about it. What do you think this could all be? I'm still learning about timelines, but do you think this could be a different timeline or was it subconscious communication or both? Okay, fucking amazing question. Let's go over this. Um, here's how... All right, there's infinite timelines, right? There's infinite variations of what can happen. We can kind of pre-select and move ourselves to the one based on our feelings. But there are other dimensions still exist. Sometimes we go there astrally when we're dreaming, daydreaming, just a stray thought. Those all exist. Now, don't let that be a terrifying thought. You know, if you think something bad or you're creating that, really don't worry about it. It's just, it just what is. What it sounds like you did here, though, is from a higher dimensional state. God, it's so woo. <laughs> Fucking Christ. But it is what it is. Um, from a higher dimensional state, it sounds like you energetically helped your friend feel a certain way about her dad getting out of jail in that dimensional reality. She accepted that and felt it. That then cascaded down to this reality, which is kind of the lower, it's moving up, but it's the it's down the food chain of dimension. So it inevitably expressed itself. So this is one of the power of our dreams, of dropping our bodies, whether it's through a dream state, a meditation, psychedelic state smoking some weed, whatever it is, we have this ability to then kind of work and operate in different planes of existence. And I know this sounds kind of weird, but people who are around me who are sensitive to kind of energetic things sometimes get a little freaked out. This happened to me a couple of times. Not freaked out, but they notice it. This happened with uh, Colin Francesetto's wife, Sarah. When I first met her um, a couple of months ago, she's like, you're like not really here. You're like oscillating up and down. And I think at first she thought like, oh, like, like you, maybe you're not in control of this. Like, here's how you ground yourself. And I'm like, nah, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> like I'm doing this on purpose. 
because I go up and down to kind of like do different things. Not in a weird way. If I'm having a conversation with you, I'm totally present. I'm totally listening to what you're saying, but I energetically kind of know how to ride this ladder up and down. So anyway, it sounds like you did that in a dream. I've found a lot of people are quite effective. A lot of women, I should say, predominantly I know who are capable of dream work kind of intuitively. And that's what you're doing. Great fucking job. It sounds like you really helped your friend um, and helped her dad get out of jail. And I I imagine as the type of person that you are, probably a pretty benevolent thing. And let's hope some healing can get there. And that certainly ties into the healing of the divine masculine. We'll get to that in a second. Um, So timeline wise, I wouldn't. (sighs) Timelines. Timelines affect this reality, but they all exist at all times. The key with timelines is to select a state or of consciousness or a feeling that you want to experience, hone in, home in on that, and then the, you will naturally be carried to the timeline you want. Don't get too fixated on timelines either because then you may be like, I'm not on the right one. Am I on the right one? And that's just another kind of neurotic game that we can play with ourselves rather than just feeling the way you want to feel and trusting and realizing you're getting put on the path you want to be put on. Does that make sense? Okay. Next question. Can you visit past lives in your dreams? Or are these different timelines? Here's what the timelines again. I had a totally weird, vivid dream where I had something stuck in my throat that I was trying to get it out. Spontaneously during that dream, I was transported to a totally different scene in my mind. There was an older woman who was me who was telling me she had the same thing happen to her and still feels something stuck in her throat from time to time. The sensation I felt in this particular scene was much different from the original scene where the other dream was taking place. It felt like this woman was real and I understood her to be me and me to be her. Do you think this was a past life, a different timeline? Is there even a difference? Okay. Uh, Intuitively, what this feels like is, yeah, that was probably a different person. Um, Now, here's a real mind bender. Everyone is you pushed out. There are no other people, but that's on a very deep kind of unity conscious level. That's where we're moving towards. People are kind of understanding that more, but let's just accept duality as a thing. Probably a different emanation of you as a different person. Um, Jessa was asking me about this in the podcast we recently recorded. Like, have I jumped into other people's bodies yet? Not consciously. I have a a pretty strong suspicion strong suspicion I'm doing that unconsciously and subconsciously and energetically. Um, But it sounds like that's what you're doing. So throat stuff, just to be clear, that would probably be related to the throat chakra, uh, color blue associated with it. This is communication. This is, you know, excuse me, of course, I'm talking like the sinuses and stuff. Um, You know, this is going to be related to really speaking your truth, being able to transmute energy and tension spots that are within you and other people. So Something that is clearly happening, I'm having this conversation a lot with people too, is um, if you're good at transmuting and dealing with your own shit and you've kind of put on your own oxygen mask and you realize the plane isn't going down, it's fucking fine, but you just want to chill people out, then you can start putting other people's oxygen masks on. So a lot of people don't know that this is their responsibility and kind of this is what they signed up for, but it is. So if these things kind of keep happening to you where you're like jumping into other people's bodies, doing this weird dream work, you know, what uh, what was Jessica calling it? Uh, macroing, basically taking care of large, big scale energetic problems. Like I, I'm definitely a macro. I, I find myself doing this a lot. I'm like, what am I doing? Like, why am I helping so many like... So this multitude of energy, you know, beings at times. I'm like, oh, okay, because I can do it. Got it. Fine. Um, And it's not really a drag. Sometimes it's like, what now? Okay. But for the most part, it's pretty awesome. And you should embrace it because that's what you signed up for. And it's fun. And that's the whole point. It's fucking fun. Um, Past lives, right? Okay. I do believe in past lives. Um, I don't find them to be particularly particularly practically functional and beneficial for most people, hence why we don't remember them. Also, I'd like to point out that one of the real just logical reasons we don't remember past lives is like if you remembered the way you died each one um, and it was brutal a few of those times, that would suck balls and would probably like imagine PTSD, but you actually remember dying. Like, Come on, really? You don't want to do that. But also, this is the final destination. I feel like when we get hit stuck in these bodies, stuck in these bodies. When we put ourselves in these bodies, in this plane of existence, anywhere in linear time in this plane of existence, right? And it's kind of fracturing and getting a little more nebulous. But in this place, um, this is the final destination. This is where you have put yourself to wake up in this life, 
If you die and you don't realize it, you go back to 20 years old. And you're around there and then you're like, oh shit, well, what's going on? All right. You don't even know anything happened. It's just like you woke up from sleep and there you are and you're just totally the same. And you keep getting these opportunities to wake up. So you keep going back to you this time. This is like what you chose. This is the body you chose to wake up in for real. So if that kind of fucks your head up, that's fine. But that's what's going on. And this, I think, goes into, uh, no, it's a similar question. Um, but basically, that's what's going on. Um, I've tried to disprove that. And the more I try to disprove that that's what happens when you die, if you don't fully wake up to who you really are, which is everything, um, <clears throat> that you go back to like a 20 something, you know, younger version of yourself. The more I try to disprove it, the more I and I discover that, oh my God, it's right around the time a lot of crazy shit happened to me. It's also right around the time a lot of crazy shit happened to other people in their lives, kind of ranging from like 14 to 25. It's very interesting. Very, very interesting. And it certainly doesn't disprove anything. And people will be like, that's fucking crazy. When you die, you go on the ground, you're worm food. All right, cool. You believe that? Maybe that's true. Mm, I've examined this many, many different ways. And so far, the more I kind of dis try to be like, no, I can't be, definitely seems to be. So <clears throat> again, past lives functionally. I think it's cool if you think it's going to help you and provide insight, but I don't think you need to. This is the life you fix. Solve all of the dimensionally wounded and traumatized versions of yourself in this body, in this conception, <clears throat> and then watch what happens. Fucking throat chakra. <clears throat> Foolproof. If you start talking about th throat chakra shit, it always happens. It's like fucking foolproof. Okay. Next question. Not Well, not really a question, uh, but I'm pretty sure it was on your podcast where you told the story of someone envisioning someone who had passed away and in their vision, the person was totally healed. I think you referred to this experience name on a different dimension, but I don't remember exactly how you explained it or how the person had the mystical experience. I also had a dream with a friend of mine who passed away from cancer. I see her a lot in my dreams. That's awesome because that's really her. And in this particular dream, we were all asking her if she was feeling okay and she was getting super annoyed and had no idea what anyone was talking about. I thought I'd tell you about this story since it was similar to the one I heard you talk about on your podcast. I had this dream before I heard the story on your podcast, which is why hearing this on your podcast really caught my attention. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So remember what I said, if you don't <clears throat> realize who you are and you die of anything, old age, cancer, whatever it is, you go in you're just going to go into a, a different version of you and a different dimension. And you wake up and you have another opportunity, maybe slightly different. So what that means is if that happened to you, but you were on this timeline or another one, <clears throat> you would then interact with the person who maybe had died in this timeline and be like, hey, what, what are you doing? They'd get mad at you. They'd be like, I'm not fucking, I don't have cancer. What the fuck is the matter with you? Fucking dick. Um, this happened to Neville Goddard. He was doing like an imaginal act. Uh, he slipped into a vision. And instead of just going into like a imaginal act, he slipped into, like he woke up. He thought he woke up in his bed, in his room, got up, went about his business, and then ran into someone who had died. He knew had died. He attended the funeral. And he's like, what the fuck? He went up to the guy and he's like, you died. And he's like, get the fuck away from me, Neville, you freak. <laughs> I don't think this is exactly how he told the story. But the guy was freaked out. And then he was like, oh, shit, I'm somewhere else. And then he was kind of like freaked out for a little bit. And then he like figured out how to wake himself up out of his bed where he was. And he was like, whoa. <clears throat> and I believe this happened to him a few more times. And he was like, oh, shit, this is just different places where people are. And so he started re realizing this is kind of what was going on and that yeah so yeah i mean this happens our dreams let me let me try to make this as clear as possible our dreams are just a dream within a dream within a dream within a dream and it's recursive it could go forever but this world is a dream when you dream in this world it is a dream within a dream within a dream right that's very important to bear in mind when dealing with this reality because if we think of this reality as solidly real and of course it is in some ways. Do not neglect your responsibilities. Do not abdicate your, you know, what you're supposed to be doing. Be reckless. But it really loosens the grip on what the fuck is going on. It's like, oh my God, I don't have to worry about everything so fucking much. And there's rules to the dream that I can bend things just like in a dream if I woke up lucidly. And a lot of people are focused on like, waking up in a lucid dream. Wonderful. Great. I highly recommend you do it. I haven't done that, but you know what I did do? I woke up in this fucking lucid dream. And let me tell you, friends, minus the actual literal flying around, 
you know, and jumping, being suspended in air is pretty much way better than all the other dreams because it's fucking here and it's fucking real, at least in this. Okay. All right. Those are the questions. Now let's get to the tweets. <clears throat> this is where I go through my Twitter. And uh, also, I heard a podcast, a really good podcast with Robin Eisenberg and Ramin Nazar on Rainbow Brain Skull. Um, she's amazing. So is he. And they were talking about Twitter and they're like, you know, it's like so many angry people. Twitter is what you make it, folks. Follow the people who aren't angry. Follow people who are rambling crazy shit about imagination and dreams and comedy and stuff. And it's a pretty pleasant place. Now, granted, it is turned into this echo chamber of kind of negativity, but that's just people expressing their their deepest aspects of their beings right now. A lot of people are confused and hurt and angry and, you know, it's all good. Just wit bear witness. You can mute people if they're a little too crazy on the politics. Uh, I'm building my wine cave, by the way. It's really good. It's actually going to be a mezcal cave. Yeah pretty sweet okay um everything is an oracle and every oracle's function is to reveal who you really are and that's pretty fun if you think about it literally everything is an oracle tarot astrology tea leaves your cat your dog your mom that table a chair that car that guy that bicycle that coin everything it's all fucking oracles and it's all you trying to communicate to you about who you are. You are everything. Jesus Christ, right? Waking up to that realization. Remember Bible, Bible school. I don't, I'm saying Bible school. What I mean is when I talk about the Bible, Jesus Christ, not a man, not a person, not secular history, not historical history. It is psychological dramas that are taking place. Jesus Christ represents waking up to who you are inside of your own head, still maintaining your identity, but recognizing you are everything. The father, the mother, the son, right? Okay. Remember the father is, I said member, member, member when? Uh, the father is the Lord. That is your awareness. The mother is your state and feeling of that awareness. And the son is what witnesses the birth. And it is the immaculate conception of perceiving objectively what you conceived, right? We got a lot of stuff coming up right now, too, in ast astrology. We'll get to that. Don't forget, I'm going to say this every episode until you completely remember and lock it in. All your dreams are coming true for real. Just let it happen, okay? Don't fight it. Don't fight it. Let it fucking happen, okay? I am the wish-fulfilling jewel. Let's get to this. Uh, our sense of I am, again, is all that's real. It's the only creative force. It is the real emanation of what is actually going on. It's amazing. It will fulfill every single wish you have ever had if you allow it to. If you fight it, if you doubt it, that's fine. Doubt and fear, again, are not there to vex you. They're not there to fuck you up. They're there to show you that you can transcend those states of consciousness. What a gift. What a gift. This is kind of akin to when people say, love your enemies. You know what I used to do when someone said, love your enemies? Because this is how they were teaching it. Fucking, they'd be like, it's good to love your enemies. Well, you know what? It's not good when someone's being a dick to you. Be like, I love you. You're so good. Oh, my God. Please. I know. I love you. Be mean to me. No, that's fucking dumb. That's what Chogyam Trungpa would call idiot compassion. The reason you love your enemies is they show you your trigger points. They show you your vulnerability. They show you the places you need to tighten up, not to be invulnerable and not to have feelings. That's exactly the opposite, but to feel those feelings and know what to do with them and not meet the negativity with more negativity, but to transmute it with love. And that's a pretty fucking easy thing to do when you recognize someone who triggers you and makes you mad quickly shows you where you need to tighten up, that's when you love them. You say, thank you so much. I love you. You actually just showed me quicker than I could have with myself. Your mirror-like reflection of my consciousness showed me where my mirror is dusty. I got to fucking clean that up. Thank you. That's loving your enemies. And that's very much the same as this I am, the wish-fulfilling jewel. Don't fight with yourself on things. If you say, I am wealthy, and then immediately have the thought that no, you're not, and doubt it, just work with it. Don't judge it and say, oh, there's something wrong with me. I can't want, can't get the things I want. You're just perpetuating that stream of consciousness. It's not worth it. Just be like, huh, what is that? I am wealthy. Why do I think I'm not? How did I get so wealthy? What did I do to get so wealthy? Put your mind on a track to solve the problem for you rather than thinking about the reason you don't have something. It's quite, it's quite effective. Okay. 
the Immaculate Conception, right? We think about the Immaculate Conception, this birth that happened from this virgin mother state. It's nonsense if you look at it logically, and people and skeptics of the Bible and other scripture will point to that and quite literally say, look at this shit, don't make sense, just like Noah's Ark. Don't make sense, can't have a boat big enough to put the people on it. It's like, yeah, that should be your clue, smart guy or smart gal, that that's not what they're talking about, that maybe they're not talking about a literal boat and they're not talking about a literal birth. Maybe it's an allegory. Maybe it's a symbolism. This is kind of one of my beefs with scientific materialists, and I don't want to get too judgy here, but it's like, they're like, don't you see it? Don't make no sense. It's like, dude, like you're missing the point. Of course it doesn't because it's symbolism. Anyway, the Immaculate Conception is not the birth of a literal child from a woman who did not have sex with anyone. That's pretty silly. What it is, is this Immaculate Conception or idea of who you are. It is a perfect, laser-focused realization, satori, instant enlightenment, uh, samadhi, right? Nirvana of what the fuck is going on here. You are everything. You are God. You are source. You are the universe. You are Buddha. You are Krishna. You are quite literally everything for real. You'll get it. It's okay. Don't worry about it. It Feels fucking wrong. That's all right, but it's real. When you do, that is called the immaculate conception. You have what an amazing idea you have for yourself and you have stabilized it by realizing it is true. That's the immaculate conception. That's Christmas. That's Christ consciousness all good. Again, there are people who can hear when I speak like this. They can hear the truth in my words. They can feel the resonant tone, but they're not, they haven't directly experienced it yet. Here's something I can, I can say. Here's this week's imagining. This is a fucking big one. This is the biggest one we've done yet. Imagine understanding this. Imagine locking into the state of knowing yourself to be Jesus Christ, not the man but the state of knowingness that you fucking locked in this Christ consciousness. You understand it for real, and you understand what the responsibilities are with that, what the powers that come with it are, and start living the life you want to live with that knowledge. That ethical framework, this is the true blessing of Christianity and a lot of the Abrahamic religions, all of them really, is that this is a powerful and divinely blessed conception of love. And love, unconditional love, is not it is kind of everything, but it is one of the best expressions. There's forgiveness, there is all this other stuff. But if you start with the immaculate conception of you being quite literally everything, then that means whatever you believe of God, whatever you believe of the universe, whatever you believe of anything, that's you. So that's the immaculate conception. Okay. Let's talk about Hathor. So let's talk about Isis a little bit. Uh, we have a few things going on since we just mentioned Christ in 2020. We have uh, Kali energy, which is this destruction. Um, I talk about her a lot um, in other episodes. She kind of is the divine feminine that comes and destroys. And it's like, fucking burn it to the motherfucking ground. That's uh, Kali. And she's the best. She destroys limited conceptions of people. She's doing this to the divine masculine right now. I luckily, God, thank God. Jesus Christ, thank God. Uh, I went through this pretty gently over this year and got to balance my energies, really healed the divine masculine shit that had been fucking me up. And my life has just been a fucking joy and pleasure in many ways since then. Um, but for those who have divine masculine to be healing, not just men, men and women, uh, Kali's coming for you. Embrace her. Just let her destroy the limited versions of yourself. Let her destroy the parts of you that are wounded, hurt, shamed, and make you act out and run patterns and have karma, and she will chop your fucking head off, and you'll be good to go. Now, after Kali comes in, we have Isis coming in, and this is kind of the proto-Egyptian goddess. She was so loved and revered that she basically took over all of the other gods and goddesses, and they're like, it's all Isis. It's all Isis. And another kind of uh, interesting... Uh, simile here, a similar thing that happened is Hermes, right? So Hermes is the god of communication. He's the persuader. He's Mercury. He's so good at persuading that if you go and look at the gods and goddesses associated with Hermes, it's like all of them because he's like, yeah, I'm that. Yeah, and I'm that too. Yeah, 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 and I'm that too. And it's like, it's funny to see all of the gods like Hanuman is Hermes, like all of these things. But Isis 
is the aspect of the divine feminine that puts together the bra, put putting Humpty Dumpty back together again. Think of the divine masculine like this egg. And it was like, I'm Humpty Dumpty, blah, 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 blah. And then it's like, Humpty Dumpty, you're acting like a dick. You're going to you're gonna fall down. He's like, no, I'm not. I'm Humpty Dumpty. I'm the best. I'm the divine masculine. And you're like, all right, Humpty Dumpty, this shit doesn't look good for you. And Humpty Dumpty fell. Oh, man. And he's, oh, gosh. He just broke all over the yolks. Everyone was like, oh. Oh, and this is what's going on for a lot of people now with their masculine energy. Um, and then, you know, someone's got to come and put Humpty Dumpty back together again. And that's Isis. And she comes in. She's like, all right, Humpty Dumpty, you fucking idiot. I'm going to put you together again, you dope. So that's what Isis does. Now, what's interesting here is Hathor is Isis. She was the proto earlier version of Isis. And she's a goddess represented, I believe, by the cow. Um... So Hathors, I've mentioned this a few times, um, Hathors are fifth dimensional beings made of light and sound. I got into the Hathors around 2004 um, from this guy, Tom Kenyon. I had no idea what I was going getting into, but at the Omega Institute in New York, my mom sent me to the sound healing class because I had just been like diagnosed. I was, just, I was just like all fucking off, but I didn't know what was going on. And I went to this thing and of all the places she sent me to, it was this dude who was like channeling Mary Magdalene and I didn't know anything and I didn't do it to that, but talking about this Egypt stuff and then he just started talking about the Hathors these fifth dimensional beings made of light and sound and I'm like what the fuck and he started chanting like doing these things and it sounded crazy and it had this crazy octave range and I got super into the Hathors not in a weird way just kind of like this exists and I don't know why but I know it does and what's interesting is these Hathors were very prominent in Egyptian times apparently. And this shit is like really woo. We're going like straight woo deep, but I've been into this stuff for a long time. And I've had a lot of my like normalish friends um, get into this too, because it's fucking real. And um, I think it's interesting that the Hathors are fifth dimensional beings made of light and sound. They've been talking about a lot of things related to chaotic nodes. Um, and that's Isis. And that is this kind of regenerative, amazing ability to heal. And that's what's going on. And then we have Jesus Christ, which is this balanced awakening of energies. You can look at it like male, female, masculine, feminine. You can look at it like uh, 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 elementally, fire, earth, air, water, creates the quintessence, the fifth element, which is the philosopher's stone. It's the keys to the universe. It's this balancing game. And so that's what 2020 is. So balancing sounds good. Um, you know, destruction, creation, healing sounds good. But if you don't latch onto it energetically, if you're not accustomed and know how to deal with your fears, uh, it might feel a little uncomfortable, might be a little turbulent. So I recommend doing the preparatory stuff towards the end of this year to get into it um, just because it'll be easier for you and it'll be smooth. And you want it to be smooth. There's no reason it shouldn't be, all right? So yeah, that's an interesting thing that's going on in 2020. Capricorn is just so crazy. We have the eclipse, right? There's so many things. We'll talk about it in a second. Um, assume you're the person you desire to be and then watch what happens. It's pretty fucking amazing. Just assume you're the person you desire to be. Also, have you realized you're the transcendental object at the end of time? Have you, have you clicked into that yet? Um, you are. You're pulling yourself to this realization. This is the only thing that's destined is that you wake up to who you actually are. Everything else is totally your choice. How you do it, when you do it, why you do it, all up to you. We talked about healing the divine masculine. Yeah, it's going to be rough. I had someone last night ask me, and she's like, my dad's a Trump supporter. And like, I kind of feel like he's going through a lot of this stuff. And, you know, he's kind of like the archetypal Trump person. And, yeah, I feel like this is going to be tough for him with the divine masculine. I'm like, you know what? Just imagine him getting it and getting it smoothly and it not being hard. A lot of you listening to this are the shamans and the healers of your families. You, I'm sure you've noticed this. Your parents are essentially your children now because they're fucking idiots sometimes and they don't know what's going on. You're the healer. If you know you're the healer, it don't have, it's not a big fucking deal. You don't have to like put your hands on them. I'm healing you. Just imagine them getting it clearly and easily. Just like the person with the question did with her friend, with the jail and all that stuff. Pretty much that. Just do it while you're going to sleep. Do it in a meditative state, calm, relaxed awareness, state akin to sleep. Um, you're good to go. That's it. That's what you do. Um, balancing energies is the same thing. We spoke about that. Make decisions with faith and conviction. Just do it. Just trust me. Just trust yourself, more importantly. Um, all right. Signs always follow. I've spoke about this, but I got someone um, 
kept asking me to go into it a little more. So if you're constantly looking for signs, you're eventually going to bump up against the reality that signs always follow a shift in consciousness. What this means is, is a lot of people will look for proof and evidence. This is what in the Bible was called, it was referred to as the Jews, the Greeks and the Jews. And this has nothing to do with people, okay? Just chill out. Um, The Greeks were people who looked for wisdom as confirmation, and the Jews were those who looked for signs and proof. Now, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with wisdom and signs. They're quite helpful. This podcast is called Synchronicity. Synchronicity is a sign, Um, but it always follows a state of consciousness. So if you believe that you will experience something um, amazing and have an incredible synchronicity, then you will. So again, let's go back to this imaginal act for this week um, because I'm getting prompted to say it again so you don't forget. Uh, You're going to lock in fucking a deep conviction and faith that this is how reality works. And from there, just watch what you can do and what happens in your life. So just imagine locking in this feeling of like, I get it. It's effortless for me. It's not hard. It's super easy. Just lock into that. So as you do that, you'll see signs fucking everywhere because everything is a sign. This whole world is a sign. It's quite literally a world constructed by you for you to wake you up to the realization that you are everything. So everything is a sign. This is a Carl Jung quote. Synchronicity is an ever-present reality for those who have eyes to see. Facts. But if you're looking for signs, you're like, where's the sign to prove it? You're going to run up. It's like the fuel eventually runs out and then the signs appear apparently stop showing up. And that's like, oh no, why is that happening? Where's, where'd the signs go? It's just you. You've just sputtered up against what your beliefs are. But that's all it is. Um, okay, so that's the sign stuff. Unity consciousness, we spoke about a little bit. Um, we'll get into that more. That's a big one. I don't know if everyone is ready for that yet. It's a, yeah, we'll get into that in another episode. Okay. Um, have you realized this world is the holodeck yet? It is, you know, the holodeck from Star Trek, the next generation. It's like this room they can go into and create like limitless worlds and do whatever they want. That's what this world is. It's the holodeck. We have it here. This is what it is. It's pretty fucking amazing. If you've ever wanted to live in the holodeck, If you ever wanted to have one, you have one. It's here. And I can teach you how to program it. You can teach yourself, more importantly. Been doing it. You've been doing it. It's the best. Um, Everything is a reflection of a previous or current state of consciousness in this world. Time delayed mirror. Pretty easy to prove. Go ahead and do it. All right. Going to talk about a dream I had a few days ago. Um, It was pretty fucking weird and crazy. And it was vivid. And it came out of nowhere. And I was like, okay. So here's the dream. Let me remember it as best as I can. Um, I was in an airplane. This is not uncommon for me. I'll be in an airplane, but I'll be on the ground and we'll be like driving on a highway around like other cars, but we're in a plane and we're going pretty fast, but like we're low. We're real low to the ground, but we're on the ground this time. And there's some people behind me. I'm towards the back of the plane. It kind of looks like a bus out the back of it, but Up ahead, I can see through the window another plane crash, also on the ground, but the hugest explosion I've ever seen. And I'm telling people behind me, it's women and children. I'm like, oh my God, this plane crashed. Like, holy shit, what the fuck? I'm just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not like freaked out, but like just like relaying the information. And they're getting like nervous and scared. They're like, no, what are you talking about? That's not true. And I'm like, oh my God, this is nuts. And there is a point where there's like this drop, like this steep drop down a hill and it feels like G-force. I'm like, whoa. And then I'm like, are we going to crash? And we don't. We go down. We're still kind of on the ground. And to the left is all this debris and just the explosion. And I see these chemical barrels on stilts. And they have letters on them, but I'm not sure what's in them. And we roll past. And everything is fine. But it's kind of like this disaster, chaotic, crazy scene of the plane that was up ahead of us. Ahead of us. And I get the sense that, okay, now we're smooth and kind of clear for takeoff. And then I wake up. So I was like, what the fuck was that dream? Like, that was really weird. And I usually don't get a ton of vivid dreams, but they've been pretty nuts recently. And I, the best I can tell you is, I believe that first plane was our old world. I believe that's the conceptions and ideas and realities and just way we thought about how the old world works. And it it exploded. It's dead. It, (laughs) you know, you can say it's yourself or the world or whatever it is, but it feels collectively that's kind of what we're moving through. And 
I think the plane that we're on uh, is one that's safe. Uh, it's it's okay. It's a world that is unfamiliar. We're still on the ground. We haven't taken off yet. We haven't moved to our new destination, but we're getting pretty close to it. And things are okay. We weren't on the plane that crashed, you know, thank God, and nor will we be. And those chemical barrels, my sense is, I thought they were going to be combustible and explode because this other plane had exploded near them. I think there's really good shit in there. I couldn't make out the words, but I think that is indicative of not knowing exactly what's to come and what's going to help us in this new world um, in terms of fuel and energy. But it's going to be something and it's going to be fun to discover what it is. And it's not going to be something scary. So I don't know. It's a dream I had. It was uh, pretty intense, felt very real. Um, you know, looking at kind of higher dimensional states of consciousness, maybe that's a place, maybe that's actually going on. In fact, it should be, and it is. But here, I think it's more representative of an allegory of what's going on. And then I will also mention, for those of you who are kind of like leveling up and getting powers or cities or psychic abilities and abilities to talk to, you know, people who are not physically here and energies, just it's okay. Just open up to it if it's new. Uh, embrace it. You know, if it's scary and it feels like too much, you don't have to do it. But uh, it's it's good. <laughs> you know, you can get some real good stuff um, from guides or aliens, whatever you want to call them. Trust it. It's you. Don't forget that. This is all you. You're running the show. If it ever feels like it's not you, know that it is you. Um, you may pressure test yourself pretty pretty hard to make sure that you really believe that, but it's always you. Um, it's very, very important to remember that. Uh, okay. I think we're done. I'm sure I have a ton of stuff. Should we pull a card? Let's pull a card from the alchemical tarot. We have the eight of wands, which is a man chopping down wands that are on fire and he's putting in the work to kind of do what needs to be done. And I don't really know the alchemical tarot that real well. Uh, the tower is right behind it. Then the two of swords with an owl right above at the top. Interesting. God bless Athena. Isis, I believe, also had an owl. Um, I'm not doing a reading right there. I was just pulling cards. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on. Just get ready. I can tell you if you're tuning into this, what I'm going to be doing is really fun <laughs> for a long time. So if you're feeling uh, a little freaked out, just remember it's all good. Do not let chaotic situations and experiences and emotions vex you and fuck you up. You're just testing yourself is fine. I promise you. I promise you. Okay? I got you. All right. That's it. Uh, I don't think I have anything else to say on this episode. If you like this podcast, rate and review it. Um Adding some new people to MindPod Network in the coming weeks. It's going to be some cool stuff going on. Oh, 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 oh. If you listen this far, go, uh, I'll mention this at the beginning of the episode next one coming up, but uh, LA readings. There's a date there, I believe. What did I do? The 19th, starting the 19th and the week of the 20th, I have in person LA readings open to the pub, not the public. You can book one and come to the place I'm staying in Laurel Canyon. We had a bunch of those last time I was there. I'm there for a month. So book, that's only that week, but just book, just book then because trust me, it's going to be better for you if you do it then. And I probably am not going to open up a ton of these this month, but I'm going to be, I'm basically, I'm in LA just so everyone understands that I'll be there most of my days um, going forward. So yeah, I'll see you there. Uh, that's it and happy imagining. See you soon. 